Okay, so what I was able to submit by deadline was this for the exercise two band book emoji. But at any time, if you want to update, improve your work, you're always encouraged to do that. So you take your PSD file, and like I was showing in the last video, your working file, and you can continue to add vector shapes to it and refine it. And I feel like this is now looking considerably younger. The sunglasses look more like sunglasses and not just glasses. Yeah. So you can see the improvements you made. That's why it can be helpful to, to kind of post progress into the canvas post. And now I want to show you some kind of special effects that you can add. So either to some of your existing vectors or to new vectors. So for one thing, if I want to make the sunglasses look a little shinier, I can duplicate one of these kind of sausage shapes, move it up above everything else, and change its color to something light. And I've switched to my laptop, so there might be some, some memory glitches here. And then I'm going to take its opacity down, right? Just like I did with the sunglasses. And I can transform it, Command T, rotate it. Try to get kind of the, the curved highlight. Hold down shift and distort it. And this can work as a bit of a reflected light in the sunglasses, maybe on both sides. So I'll duplicate that. Command J to duplicate, Command T to transform, right click inside, flip horizontal, voila. We get to have that little effect on the lens on both sides. Maybe tilt it slightly differently. That helps back up the sense that there's sunglasses, right? And then what if I want another kind of highlight? What if I just do a shape? Uh, let's even just do a rectangle. Mostly been doing ellipses. And I'm going to fill that with no stroke, with that kind of light color, maybe even a lighter color, and then warp it using Command T, right click, and just bend its edges a little bit so it's like it's reflecting like a square light into a slightly curved surface. Bend it in here a little bit, here. And I can play, of course, with its positioning. I can flip it. I can set it on the inside here. I think it's probably best suited out on this side. And I can play, of course, with the opacity of it. And you see, as you layer up those opacities, you get more and more kind of complicated effects. That might suggest what you want. In my case, these kind of cool 50s sunglasses.
and I might even repeat that. So Command J. Oops, gonna make sure it's selected first. Command J, and then make a smaller version of it. And you can work with the warp to have it kind of extend. You can just take this in so many different directions just from rectangle tools. So I told you how, showed you how we make kind of sausages and half ovals, a lot of ellipse tools. This is how with patience you can really customize rectangles to be what you want. Just this endless tinkering can be a lot of fun. I want to round out that bottom. All right. And then I can take both of them and transform them together. I want to make them a little narrower. If that works, tilt them a little bit more. Maybe just nudge them down a little bit. Yeah. All right. So what if I want that same effect? I can copy both of them. They're both selected. Hold down Command-J, then take that duplicate, the two of them, and move it over here. And that can work. This shape I can transform a little bit so that the colors don't overlap too much. And this shape I can turn off so I can get to the shape underneath it that I want to warp a little bit more. To get all of this working. All right. So those are all basic fill and opacity effects. Now we can play with some of the special effects which are called layer styles. And if you double click on the gray of the layer, not on the title of the layer, because that would just retitle it, and not on the icon of the layer because that will bring you to the color selector instead just on the gray of your shape vector layer it will bring up these layer style options and layer styles are fantastic tools so i'm on the big yellow circle right now so for one i can add a drop shadow to it which i can set a lot of different options different opacities different sizes and that helps it stand out on a background. We can see how that looks on a white background. Once I hit OK, <laughs> there we go. And then what's great is we can turn those layer effects on and off. And we can also edit them, make them less opaque, less big, maybe less far away. Maybe I want a tiny size, but a bigger spread that will be softer or the opposite. Bigger size will spread it out and soften it as it gets distanced. Take the opacity down. I have what's called noise turned on, which is a really nice way to break up the um, the flatness of these. So other things I can do on that yellow is I can fill it with a gradient. I can pick any gradient I want. I have this kind of crazy one, whatever I last designed. I can reverse it, 
you know, that's kind of an interesting one. But then just like every other effect, I can take its opacity way down and I can give it a little bit of that, that noise. This time, the way I give it noise is through the blending mode. Instead of normal, like that, I can make it dissolved. And that will break it up into individual pixels. So when you look at, up at it at close, it looks like construction paper. So that's helpful. I can additionally give it something like a shadow on the inside of the shape. So inner shadow. You can pick the color. I can pick kind of a darker brown color instead of that deep blue. And then I can play with the size, the noise, and the distance. And it just kind of puts a shadow around that bottom edge. Now let's say I like those features. I can copy the layer style by right clicking and saying copy layer style and I can apply it to other layers. Right click and paste the layer style. But it's going to look different depending on what the base color is. But then I can turn certain things off like the gradient overlay. But keep the drop shadow and just give it a little bit of extra oomph. Maybe Maybe lose the drop shadow, but keep the inner shadow. See how that gives it a little bit of dimension. And then I can always deepen that by making it a little bit darker, changing the opacity's color, maybe go back to the deeper blues. See, that will feel a lot stronger. And you can add additional layer styles. Don't think I want satin. <laughs> it's not with purple, but I can try it with the brown, see if I like that effect or not. Just deepens it, gives it a little bit of a core highlight. Yeah, so let's do that. And if I like that there, then I can copy it, right click, copy layer style, and apply it to this one. Right click, Paste layer style. I'm not going to do that to the glasses just because they're made up of so many individual layers. But I might do it to the tongue. So what happens if I paste the layer style onto the tongue? Right, that's kind of fun. And if I decide, okay, that gradient doesn't make sense, I can play with that gradient. Maybe make it normal instead of dissolved. And actually design it. Like delete some of these extra bands of color from it so it's just a nice smoother gradient. And then if I want to dim down that inner shadow, I can just go to that effect by double clicking and take the opacity down. I want to make this image darker, I think. So a little bit deeper, so it feels like the tongue's coming from somewhere. And then I might want to just do a little ellipse as the crease in the tongue. Just like that. And then free transform it and warp just the top. Okay, now I can just play with opacity. Give the tongue a slight crease. If I think it's too much, I can take the opacity down more. And I can also just use dissolve from the blending mode here in the layer. It still keeps it as a vector. All of these options. 